everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the daisy square for the Unicorn Dreams Blanket Crochet Along. Now if this is your first visit to my channel, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. All the information for the Daisy Square for the Unicorn Dreams Blanket Crochet Along is over on Lisa's website, Cute Crochet Makes. Now I've got a link to it in the description box below and I thoroughly encourage you to take a moment to pop on over to our website to grab yourself a free downloadable PDF copy, the written pattern. And over there she's also got the hook information, the yarn information, the colors, you name it, all the information you could possibly need is over on Lisa's website. As always, there are timestamps in the description box below as well. So don't forget to click that little triangle to expand the box. The timestamps are great. If you only require help with certain sections, you can jump immediately to that part of the video and cut out anything that you might not necessarily need. So this square is a particularly pretty one. Um, it is very, very heavily textured as you can see. And you also can flatten it out a bit if you want it to have more sort of daisy-like petals. It can be flattened out. However, I quite like it looking almost a bit like a chrysanthemum. So is that how you pronounce chrysanthemum? Chrysanthemum. <laughs> how do you pronounce chrysanthemum? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. <laughs> All right, so let's crack on with the daisy square and jump straight into the tutorial. So first off, we are going to be making this pink granny square. Now this granny square has been made with turning each row, which gives it this lovely sort of back and forth texture and makes it super square and perfect. If you are a confident crocheter and you know you got your granny squares down, you know what you're doing, I need from you a one, two, three, four, five, six round straight traditional granny square from you. Do not cut your yarn on the sixth round meet me back here and we continue to finish off these two single crochet rows together. So if you're a confident crocheter and you've got your granny squares down, six row granny from you turning back and forth each time. If you are not a confident crocheter or you'd like a little bit of a refresher, that's not a problem. We're gonna do the first three rounds of this granny square together and then you're free to carry on, take it up to six rounds, and then we can all be at the same point for this pretty edging. So to start, we're going to make a magic ring. Now, if you don't know how to make a magic ring, I have linked to it in the description box below, or a little eye will have hopefully popped up in the top right-hand corner of this video. But from your magic ring, straight off, you're going to chain three, which counts as your very first double crochet. Then we're going to place two more double crochet straight into the center ring. Now, if at any point I'm going too fast for you, there are three dots at the top right hand of this video for the settings where you can slow the speed right down. Or if you don't know how to make a double crochet, I've linked to a video showing you exactly how it's done in the description box below. Now we're going to chain two and put three more double crochets into this center ring. Chain two, three double crochet into that center ring. chain two, three double crochet into the center ring, chain two, and then we're going to slip stitch to the top of that initial chain three. So these are my chains here, one, two, three, I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to the top of that 
third chain. Now you're good to go ahead and pull your centre ring closed. Now for row two, we are going to be turning. So chain three and turn your work. So you've now got the back with this tail facing you. Into this chain two space, you're going to work two double crochet because that chain three counts as your first double crochet stitch. Chain two and put three more double crochet into that same space. Now we're immediately going to leap into this next chain two space and you're going to place three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all into this same chain two space over here. Now we're going to repeat that step into the last two corner spaces here. So straight away into this next one, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and then repeat that again in this space over here, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Now to end this row, we need to join up over here. So just like before, you're going to place a slip stitch into the top of your initial chain three. Now, if you can't find it, don't worry too much. Just aim for the top. And that's the end of round two. Round three, again, we're going to be turning. So chain three, and then flip your work around again. So that tail is now at the back of your work. Now into this space here in between the corners on the side, you're going to place two double crochet. Because remember that chain three counts as your first double crochet. And then straight away into the corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all into that same corner space. Now into this gap on the side, three double crochet, just on their own. And then into this corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all into that same space. And you're going to repeat this all the way around. So side, three double crochet, corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, side, corner. To end the round, 
join with a slip stitch to the top of that very first chain three. Okay, so you're gonna continue in this fashion. So you'll do a, a granny round, your chain three, which counts as your first double crochet, turn your work and pop two more double crochet into that space that will be immediately next to you to form a side. Then you're going to continue round in a corner, put three double crochet chain two, three double crochet, and then on the sides, just three double crochet. So do that all the way around, join with a slip stitch, chain three, turn. So we're going to want six rounds in total. So that's my first corner done. And now I have space for two side clusters, which are just three double crochet hanging out on their own. Then I'm back to a corner. So your granny square will grow by one extra side cluster each time you turn and move up to do another round. So as this is round number four, you carry on, I'll carry on, and meet me back here when you have six of these granny square rounds. Do not cut your yarn, and we can finish off with these single crochet rounds. Okie dokie, so you have a six round granny square that you've been flipping back and forth, back and forth, and now it is ready for round seven and eight, these single crochet rounds on the edge that you can just see here. So do not cut your yarn. For this round, for round seven, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to place a single crochet into every single stitch, the top of all your double crochets, all the way around and in the corners, you are going to place two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. So you can see I'm just going into the top of every double crochet that I just made in round six. Working my way to the corner here. And then in the corners, as I said, two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. Now the only thing to watch out for is that these corner stitches don't overlap and cover your double crochet stitch right here. So you wanna make sure that as you're doing your single crochets all the way along, it will be in groups of three because your double crochet granny clusters are sets of three. So you keep going all the way around, single crochet in every stitch, and in the corners, two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. To finish this round, you're gonna join with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet that you did and try not to split your yarn. Chain one, cut your yarn, leaving a nice long tail to weave in afterwards, pull it tight, and then grab your pale lemon color. So for round eight, we're going to join our new color into the chain two space, any of them, any chain two space, 
from this single crochet round. So we're going to be joining in a corner. So pop a slip knot onto your hook. Bring that loop through, chain one, and we're ready to begin round eight. So as we're already in a corner, we are going to place two single crochet, chain two, and two single crochet all into that same chain two space. And again, we're going to place a single crochet in every single single crochet from the round below. And in the chain two corner spaces, two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. Now, as I mentioned in the last round, just be a little bit wary that you're not covering up that very first stitch with your corner sections. So you need, might want to shunt these corners around a little bit. So just as before, single crochet in every stitch from the round below and two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet in the corner spaces. So I'm just gonna whiz round and I will show you how to finish off this round and then we can move on to making the daisy. So to finish the round, we're going to end with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet that you did. Chain one, snip your yarn, pull it through, pull it tight, and we are done with the granny square section of the daisy square. On to the daisy. This daisy is made separately and then sewn onto the granny square. I have a video on how to sew your appliques invisibly to your projects, which I will link to in the description box below if a little card hasn't already popped up up here. These white petals, as beautiful as they are, they do not show up on camera. So I'm going to be making my little petals using purple, which will hopefully show up a bit better for you guys. So with my four millimeter crochet hook and my yellow yarn, I'm gonna go ahead and make a magic ring. And from that magic ring, you're then going to chain two, which does not count as a stitch. So for the first round, you're gonna go ahead and pop 16 double crochet into this magic ring. Once you have your 16 double crochet, you're gonna go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that very first double crochet that you did. So ignore your chain two and join with a slip stitch to the top of that first double crochet. You're then good to go ahead and tighten up the magic ring. So for round two, we're going to be doing some front and back post stitches. Now, again, if you don't know how to do front and back post stitches, it's very difficult to show you on this pale yellow yarn. And I do also have a video on that too, showing you how to do it which I have linked to in the description box below, or again, a little eye will hopefully have popped up in the top corner over here. So to start, you're going to chain two, which again does not count as a stitch. Now things get a little bit tight here, so bear with me and I will try and show you exactly what I'm doing. So the premise for this round is you're going to be doing a front post double crochet, followed by a back post, front post, back post, front post, back post, all the way around. Now. Your first front post double crochet goes around this double crochet that you slip stitch to. So I slip stitch to the top of it here. You can kind of see my chain two is here. And we're going to do a front post double crochet around this very first stitch. Now, as I said, it is quite tight, this, especially this initial one with that chain two in the way. 
you just go ahead and <laughs> force your hook in there to do your front post double crochet. And then back post around the next double crochet. These ones are easier to find after that first one. They're a lot easier to get into. So you're going to repeat this all the way around front post double crochet followed by back post double crochet for the entirety of this round. So at the end of round two, you'll have 16 stitches. Okay, so when you have finished all your front post and back post stitches, just take a moment to check you have 16, especially if you lost count halfway through like I did with the postman turning up. So the way to check is forget trying to count your actual stitches at the front here. Count your Vs along the top. You should have 16 stitches. Sixteen. Okay, so I've got 16. <laughs> Slightly worried there for a second. So when you've got your 16 stitches, you're going to go ahead and slip stitch to the top of that first front post double crochet. It's this top one here. Just go ahead and slip stitch. And that is round two. Okay, round three is a nice simple one. You're going to go ahead and chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And you're going to place a single crochet into the top of each of your stitches from the round below. So at the end of this round, you'll have 16 single crochet, which should bring the sort of center of your flower together. When you've got your 16 single crochet, you're going to join it with a slip stitch to that very first single crochet that you did. So it should have made your center sort of pop up. So to finish this round, you're going to chain one and then you want to cut yourself a really nice long length of yarn because this tail is what you're going to use to sew your daisy to the square when we're finished. So pull that yarn all the way through. I've got a knot in my yarn, never mind. Put it all the way through, pull it tight. You've got a nice long length and then go ahead and grab your petal color, which for you, if you're following the crochet along will be white and for me will be purple. Okay, so for round four, we're going to be working into the front loop only of these single crochets. So this here is your front loop, that one there. So that's your back loop back there. So instead of putting your hook under both, you're just going to go under the front loop only. So with your hook under the front loop of one of your single crochet stitches, we're gonna pop a slip knot onto your hook. Draw that loop through to the front, chain one, and pop a single crochet in the same place. Chain eight. Now we're going to be working back down this chain. So in the second chain from your hook, remember the loop on your hook doesn't count as anything, so ignore this first one, we're working into this second chain, pop a single crochet. Then you're gonna put a single crochet in the next six chains. So you'll have seven single crochet in total. Then you're going to slip stitch into the front loop of the next single crochet. 
So front loop only and slip stitch. Chain eight. Into the second chain from your hook, pop a single crochet and then place six more working down the chain for a total of seven single crochet. Slip stitch into the front loop only of the next single crochet. Now you're going to repeat this all the way around. So chain eight, work single crochets back down the chain, slip stitch into the front loop of the next stitch. Chain eight, single crochets, slip stitch. Do that all the way around and you'll have 16 petals. Okay, so you should have 16 petals that are curling and going all over the place. So to finish the row, you're going to end with a slip stitch to the top of this first single crochet. Ready to begin round five. Okay, round five. Now you're going to want to fold these petals that you've just made forwards as you're working because we're now going to be working into the back loops. So we've done all that round in the front loops. Now we're going to be working into the back loop of that same single crochet. So as you work round, you'll sort of want to fold and hold these petals out of the way so you can easily access the back loop. Okay, so first things first, it's a bit tricky to see because obviously you've got your end from where you joined, but we're attached to this first single crochet. And what you want to do is the back loop of it here, you want to slip stitch in. Now I'm gonna do my best to show you, but it is very difficult with this extra yarn tail. But I'm just going to be slip stitching into the back. Oops. sort of a bit awkward, <laughs> might need to like sort of yarn under. But I've slip stitched to the back of that first stitch where your single crochet was. Now, don't worry too much because we're going to be doing this all the way around. And if you find that you've gone into the one behind it, honestly, it doesn't matter. We're going to be making 16 petals again. So these petals are a little bit different to the first round, but the premise is very similar. So go ahead and for this round, we're going to chain 10. Single crochet in the second loop, second chain from your hook. And then you're going to put a half double crochet in the next seven chains. So I've got a single crochet, seven half double crochets, and now leave that chain unworked and we're going to slip stitch to the back loop of the next single crochet from the round below. So into your next unworked back loop. So this forms a slightly wider petal behind your original petal. So repeat that all the way along. Chain 10, single crochet into the second chain from the hook, 
half double crochet in the next seven chains and then slip stitch to the back loop of the next stitch of this yellow. So you're going to do this all the way around. Now, as I mentioned, you want, you'll want to try and keep these front petals out of the way. That does get quite chaotic, but keep going. 10 chains, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, seven half double crochets, slip stitch to the next back loop. Keep going all the way around and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So to finish, you've done your 16th petal. It is absolutely crazy. There's just tendrils, <laughs> petals everywhere. You're going to end with a slip stitch to your very first slip stitch. So this one here, this back petal. So move your front four ones forward and you're just gonna pop a slip stitch right in here. Then chain one, oops, try not to catch that yellow. Grab your scissors. Snip your yarn, pull it up, pull it tight. And now you're going to weave in all your white, in your case, or in mine, purple ends. So I've got two ends here that I'm gonna weave in. Weave in your center ring. I trim mine to get it out of the way just for filming, but you should still have a nice long tail to weave in. And then with this long yellow end that's been getting in your way this entire time, you're going to sew your daisy to your granny square, but only sew it around this yellow third round. You do not want to attach any of the petals because you want them to stand free from your square. So you can see I've sewn around that round three. You want them to stand free and have all this amazing scrummy texture. So that's it, you are done. You just need to sew this to your granny square and you're complete. So I hope you enjoyed this Daisy Square tutorial. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to shout in the comments section below. It would be amazing if you haven't already, if you hit subscribe and if you just drop me a thumbs up or a comment to let me know what you thought of this video. So until next time, Happy crocheting! Bye!